Okay, we're looking at Logic Game 4, and this is LSAT 42, December of 2003. For the school paper, five students each review one or more of exactly three plays, S, T, and U, but did not review any other plays. The following conditions must apply. K and L each review fewer of the plays than M. L cannot review the same as J, and M cannot review the same as J. K and O both review T, and exactly two students review exactly the same uh, thing as one another. Okay, so we are looking at um, S, T, and U. Okay, and we, as always, want to use the hierarchy of rules to solve the scenarios. And we're given a first order rule right here that tells us K and O have to occur in T. Okay, so this rule is completed. So what we need to be thinking about is this little thing that occurs right here. K and L review less than M. Okay, so what we should know is that M um, could do three or two because K and L at least have to do one per the, per the game setup. But M can't go in the same, um, M can't review the same as J. So that limits M to just two, okay? So when we, when we figure out what M's gonna do, we just need to distribute M. M could do this, <clears throat> I'll bring the KO down here. M could stay here and go all the way across. And then lastly, M could go right here. Okay, that is all that M can do. So we are completed with M. Okay, now we just need to think about um, what K can do. K can only go once because M went twice. So K is completed. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and finish up with L. We now know that L can go only go once, and so now I'll just copy two more of these. And then place L. Okay, and then... All right, and then we just place L across again. Okay, and then now we have this. Okay, L can go across. All right, and that's the entirety of what L can do. So L is now completed. Now we just need to think about J. All right, because J is the, the subject of this exclusion rule, and J cannot go with L or M. So if you look here, J can only occur here. And if you look here, there's an M and an M here. J can go there. If you look at this one, we have M's and L's all the way across, so this one will not work. Um, here, the same thing. We have, um, actually right here, we could put a J. All right, we have M's and L's and M. We'll put a J here. Now, here, there's M's and L's all the way, so that would fall out. Um, here, we have the same situation where we could put a J. All right, <clears throat> now let's keep going. Um, there are L's and M's all the way across right here. And then if we look here, we're, we're forced to put a J here and a J right here. And that is the entirety of what can happen with J. Um, and we've exhausted all the rules except for this. Two students review exactly the same thing. Okay, well if we look right here, K and O are two students that review exactly the same thing. And it's, the question becomes, can anything else happen? Well, if you were to put an O over here, and I'll put it in parentheses, K, um, K and O are no longer doing the same thing, but M and O could be doing the same thing. Okay, so in that situation, we no longer have K and O doing it, but M and O are. So basically, O could go over here. All right, now if we look at this, this scenario right here, what's happening is we have three students doing the exact same thing as one another. All right, here and here. Um, they're all each going one time. So we've got to do something to break that up. That means O is going to have to go here or here 
or both. Uh, both O can do both. Okay, that would break it up to where K and J are only doing the same thing. And that's really what we've got to have um, happen in this, in this situation right here. Now, if we look at this one, we have K, O, and L doing the same thing. All right? Um, all right, if we look right here, <clears throat> if I were to just put an O right here, Okay, that would mean that K and L are doing the same thing. That's two students. And then O and M are also doing the same thing. So if that were to happen, we'd have uh, four students doing the exact same thing as one another. So what it forces is this. Here, O and M are no longer doing the same thing to, with each other. Okay, K and L are doing the same thing with one another. There are two, two students that exceed, see the exact, um, that review the exact same thing. All right. So again, O is forced to distinguish itself from M. Now, what that also could mean is that there's an option for O to go here. O can go there or not go there. But once it comes over here, it has distinguished itself from M. Now let's look at this one. We have K and O doing the same thing. Um, the question becomes, uh, what, what can happen? Can, if we wanted to, we can put an O on this side, and if we put an O over here, M and O would end up doing the same thing, and K and O would not. So uh, it's a little bit confusing, but that's exactly how it would have to work itself out. And we've solved the scenarios. Um, there are a total of six of them. Okay. Now it's just a matter of going through and answering the questions. All right, which one of the following could be an accurate and complete list of students who review only S? Okay, well here L reviews only S, all right? Um, and if we go down, M does not review only S. O could never do it. Um, and here again, L is the only one that does it here. And J is the only one that does it here. And J is the only one that um, reviews, or only reviews S right here. So it's between L and J. And we're only given in the answer choice A is L. Okay, so don't be confused with J and L because J and L don't ever do it together. Okay, by the rules, L can't be with J. That's an extremely confusing question because you want to say, well, both L and J can review only S, but they can't do it at the same time. So that is why A is the correct answer. L is the one that's doing it himself, and J is doing it as well, not together. All right, 20, which one of the following must be true? J reviews more plays than L. Well, we know that J and L review the same amount. It's one, okay? Um, let's look at B. M reviews more of the plays than J. Absolutely, M has to review two, and J reviews one. Nothing will ever change that, so that's, that has to be the answer to the question. Um, C, M reviews more of the plays than O. Well, no, it actually could be that O reviews more than M, so that, that's not, that doesn't have to be true. D, O reviews more of the plays than J. Well, O can only, can review one or review three, so it doesn't have to be. O can basically um, review the same amount as J. And then E, O reviews more plays than K does. Well, the same thing applies right here. O and K can review the exact same amount. So again, we know that B is the answer to the question. 21, if exactly three of the students review you, which one of the following could be true? All right, well, this is the, these are the only scenarios where we have three students reviewing you. Um, M does not review you. No, M would have to in both of them. O does not review you. In order for three of them to go, O would definitely have to review you. J reviews you. J could never review you if we have M, L, and O there. Okay, D, L reviews T. That cannot happen. And then E, O reviews Sunset. Well, if we look at this scenario right here, O could review Sunset. That is the answer to the question, which is E. 
22. Which one of the following could be an accurate and complete list of the students who review T? Okay, well, could J and K do it? Well, if you look, the minimum we have is 3, so J and K are out, which means B is out as well, K and O. Let's look at C, though. K, L, and O. Will we never have a K, L, and O um, working like that? Um, and then let's look at D. K, M, and O. Well, that happens right here. That's the answer to the question, uh, which is D. And then E, L, M, O. We never have L, M, and O doing that. All right, let's look at 23. If J does not review T, which one of the following must be true? So where do we have J not reviewing T? It happens here, 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 and here. So 1, 2, 5, and 6. Uh, J reviews, so if J does not review T, which one of the following must be true? J reviews S, well, um, that could be true, but it doesn't have to be true, okay? Because J could also review U. Um, L reviews U. Um, that does not have to be true. L could review S or L could review T. M reviews S. That does not have to be true according to scenarios 5 and 6. And then D, M reviews T. Well, if you look at that, we have M reviewing T in all of them. That's the answer to the question, which is D. And then E, O reviews U. And that doesn't have to be according to scenarios one and two. Okay, that completes logic game four. And that's LSAT 42, December of 2003. Thank you.